Hey everyone, I just wanted to hop on here and make a video um, because I've been feeling like personally in my work that I feel like I've been working and I haven't really been seeing anything. And last week I made a video or a couple days ago I made a video about when you work hard and you don't see results and why you aren't seeing results. But today I want to make a video on um, just like in, an encouraging video to tell you like you're not working in vain. None of this is in vain. Um, and the type of things that come up and the kind of thoughts that come up when we start thinking that we're working for no reason and the truth behind those thoughts and how to combat them. So um, I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you can come in today and I can say all the right things. Let it be all of you and none of me. So I was reading 1 Corinthians 15 verses 58 and it was talking about how we should be steadfast and do exceedingly in all God's works knowing that none of his works are in vain. So when it talks about doing exceedingly in all God's works, it talks about basically following God's will. Like if you're following God's will, if you're going on your chosen path, the path and purpose that God has for your life, then whatever work you're doing, you're doing his work. You're doing work for him because it's his will for your life. So like this YouTube channel is his will for my life. And my, his will for my life goes way beyond this YouTube channel, but I'm doing his will for my life. So let's use myself as an example. Right now, maybe I'm not seeing you know as much algorithm boost as i should be seeing because i'm posting twice a week every day i'm posting two or three shorts every week like what's going on i'm not seeing that well the first thing that pops up when we feel like we're working in vain or when we feel like we're doing something in vain is doubt um but the first doubt that comes about when we have doubts we have to question ourselves. Are we believing in God in vain? And believing in God in vain means basically we're saying we believe in God, but our actions aren't showing it. We're, we, we're saying that we believe in God, but we're not taking every thought captive and we're not destroying and putting those thoughts down that come against the word of God. And I know it's easier said than done because thoughts just flow through our minds, but you have to pick and choose what you allow to stay there and what you tell to leave. So we shouldn't be believing in vain because that's actually the main source of where our doubt comes from. Our doubt comes from not even believing that the God that we serve will do what he says he will do. Believing in vain also comes from us saying, I will do this. I will stop eating sugar. I will stop eating fast food. I will start, I will start working out. But just not believing and not trusting in ourselves enough to actually do that action, right? And when we keep saying we're going to do something, but our actions aren't aligning with what we're saying, we're doing it in vain, right? And we shouldn't be doing anything in vain. Um, another part of doubt comes from bad company and in that passage in first corinthians 15 it says bad company corrupts good morals so come to your senses and stop sinning um now again a lot of people think bad company corrupts good morals is generally talking about friends and the people you keep around you and yes for the most part bad company corrupts good morals applies to friends and the people you keep around you but bad company corrupts good morals can even just be your day-to-day -day habits can even be yourself your bad company can be corrupting the good morals that the word of god is teaching you so bad company can be not working out and knowing that you need to or you might develop a health problem now you're hindering god's will for your life because of something a, a selfish desire or something that you've created as an idol in your life believe it or not food is a huge idol for us in society like when i was turning to sugar every time i got stressed out or every time i was frustrated or every time i felt so weak instead of asking god for strength i always turned to sugar so f sugar food candy junk food that became an idol to me i turned to that before i turned to my so-called god i turned to sugar and i turned to all these things to give me something that god already promised he would give me so bad company corrupts good morals and that doubt that we have in ourselves is usually because of what we're surrounding ourselves with what we are telling ourselves or the actions that we're doing that confirm these doubting thoughts so you just really need to check your check your ways and i made a video last week again talking about thinking carefully think carefully about all your ways the bible says think carefully about all your ways 
And that means everything, everything you do. Whether you think it's good, whether you think it's bad, you need to think carefully about everything you do because some of the things we are doing are hindering our spirit. Some of the things that we are doing are not beneficial. And Paul writes, you know, I do the things that I don't want to do instead of doing the things that I do want to do. So we just need to be careful. We need to check our ways. And then it says, come to your senses. We know the truth. We know right from wrong. We know left from right. We know the truth. But what we do is we we know the truth, but we let our desires, we let the way we're feeling in the moment take over the truth all the time. We always do it. And when I say we, these videos and everything, when I say we or you, I'm always talking about myself as well. We let the things of this world hinder what God has, the clear path that God has put us on. And God is saying, come to your senses. We know we shouldn't be listening to that music. We know we shouldn't wake up at 3 a.m. to watch that TikTok. We know we shouldn't be ordering a Big Mac meal. We know what we're supposed to be doing. And so the Bible says, come to your senses, meaning you know what is right from wrong. So you just need to come back to the truth. And um, then it says, stop sinning. The Bible has a passage, and I forgot what book it was in, but it's a passage subheading saying deliberate sin, how God punishes deliberate sin. It's one thing to be sinning and not know that you're doing it. It's one thing to be doing bad, immoral things and not know that you're doing it or not know that it's a bad thing or not know that it's a sin. And it's a whole other thing to be deliberately sinning and taking advantage of God's grace. God isn't stupid and God cannot be mocked. He literally sees everything on the heavens and on earth because everything belongs to him. I made a video last week saying the cattle on the thousand hills belongs to the Lord. So everything belongs to him and he can see everything. Everything that is done in the dark will come to light and God can never be mocked. So be very careful. Be very careful. Be very careful. Stop deliberately sitting because Jesus died on the cross for you. That's not your one-way ticket to sin and do whatever you want. That's your one-way ticket to have salvation and to have a relationship with God. If it wasn't for Jesus, we could barely have a relationship with God. That's why God had to make the covenant with Abraham. We're so evil. We're so wicked. That's why God had to keep going back and forth with Israel. We're so evil. We're so wicked. We can't stop. No matter what God does for us, we somehow betray him. But again, the Bible says God is married to the black, the backslider. I don't think the Bible says I think that was a preacher that said that. But yeah, God says, you know, he, he knows who the backslider is, right? And he's committed to the backslider. He's committed to getting us back even when we always fall. Um... And another thing, you don't want your work to be in vain. Sometimes our work is in vain because we're disqualifying people God is qualifying. Um, And I'll explain that in a bit. We need to be very careful about who we talk about and what we say. Because the same way God can punish somebody for talking bad about his children, which is us, the same way God can punish you for talking bad bad about another one of his children and you and you know you'll know them by their fruits but some people like they won't flat out you know like you won't flat out see how devoted they are at first right because there's a difference between having a relationship with god and just being overly religious so um in that reading in first corinthians 15 it says god turns dishonor into glory and he turns weakness into power god can use anybody God can use anybody. So don't think that your work, don't think that what he's called you to do, don't think that the purpose that he's placed for your life is in vain because nothing that the Lord says or does will ever be in vain. He's God. We need to remember that we're serving a God who doesn't lie and who doesn't have a drop of evil in him. So God will use dishonor. You can be a big dishonor to your family. Everybody in your city can know you as a dishonor and God will turn that into glory, complete and utter glory. It will be a swift change, a turnaround that people have never seen before. You can be the weakest person ever, the lowest of the lowest, the least of everybody, and you will be the next president. You will be the next mayor. God will turn that into power. Now, God has different ways of doing that. Don't think it's going to be the you know, common ways and the ways that come up to mind right when you think about them. Like God has very strategic, and he does things in a way the world hasn't seen yet. So... God will definitely use the least of us to do something good. So I just want to say, if you're doing any work for the Lord and you're not seeing any 
progress or it doesn't seem to be working out nothing that you're doing is in vain as long as it's for god so definitely have discernment check your spirit think carefully about your ways and most of all pray god has opened prayer as a discussion that we can have between us and him and we can be totally honest and he knows what we're thinking about in the deepest depths of our hearts so be honest when you pray and know that none of the work you're doing for god is in vain